How many different ways can we use one basic staple that everyone should have in their prepper pantry? Stay tuned and find out. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone, or welcome if you're new. Thank you for tuning in today. Instant milk powder is one of those basic staple items that we probably all have in our pantries. And it's something that we definitely all should have. Unless you have a severe milk allergy, which is different from being lactose intolerant and less common, you really should have shelf stable milk available in your home at all times. Even if you think, you know, I'm not a milk drinker, I don't even like milk, so why would I need to store it in my preps? Well, plenty of reasons. You may need it for other members of your household. Even if there's no one in your household currently who drinks milk, you never know how your household makeup may change in times of crisis. This is very common. You'll need it as an ingredient in cooking and baking. Just think about how many of those common items most of us store in our preps that call for milk as an ingredient in preparation. Mac and cheese, hamburger helper, cornbread mix. Many recipes and convenience food items call for milk. And if you're not a milk drinker, you're much less likely to have milk on hand. So even in non-emergency situations, it can be helpful to have some instant milk available so you can mix up a little fresh when you need it. This also holds true for guests you may have in your home, especially if it's someone like grandkids who might like some milk. You can just mix up what you need when you need it. If you watch my hauls, you know I've been really stocking up on instant milk the last month or so because the one that we use most and really enjoy has been on sale 60% off, which is nuts. I've never seen it this low before. Last time I stocked up, it was 50% off. We do see that from time to time, and I thought that was good, but never 60%. And from what I hear, we, we will probably never see this price again, so I think I may actually snag one more case before the end of the month. I figure it's only going to save me money down the road because as long as it's sealed in these cans, the milk has a shelf life of 25 years. Years, so I'm not going to be worried about using it up before it goes bad or anything like that. But since I've been stocking up on so much of it, it got me thinking about all the other things you can do with instant milk powder besides drinking it and cooking with it. So today I'm going to show you a few of my favorite things to do with my instant milk powder. It really can replace so many dairy items that you would normally have to buy fresh and refrigerate. So in a grid down situation, this could give you access to items that you wouldn't otherwise be able to have. And that's really the name of the game when it comes to prepping. So let's get started and see what we can come up with. Now the most obvious use for your instant milk powder is going to be to mix it up and drink it or put it on cereal, etc. You're going to want to follow the directions on whatever milk you use. This one that we use calls for three tablespoons per cup of water, three quarters of a cup for a quart or three cups for a gallon. Or obviously you could do the math and make any other amount that you needed. If you like it a little richer, you can do a little more powder. Now we really like the taste of this milk. This brand has one taste test. People usually don't even notice the difference between this milk and fresh milk. Another use for the instant milk that I've just been turned on to is using it as a coffee creamer. It really works great as a coffee creamer. I love it like this. I have to have some kind of cream in my coffee. So any of those mornings that I wake up and I realize that I'm out of whatever I usually use to cream my coffee, I'm super thankful to have my instant milk powder. I like it much better than I like the powdered creamers that you can buy in the store because they're not real dairy. They're just full of a whole bunch of really yucky stuff. And incidentally, if you have never seen this mug before, I absolutely love this mug. Mr. Wicked Prepared got this for me for Mother's Day. It's called an Ember Mug. And this actually charges up on its own little charging coaster and then it actually keeps my coffee hot for hours, which is awesome because I'm one of those people who's always sipping coffee all day long and I'm always having to warm it up. And then I forget it in the microwave and I can't find my coffee. And so this has really changed my life. It honestly has. I'll put a link to this down in the description box for anybody who wants to check it out. A few tips for powdered milk in general. Number one, any milk is gonna taste better cold. So if you can, mix it up the night before and refrigerate it. It's important to find a brand of milk powder that you and your family really like the taste of. But if you end up with some that you don't really like, it can help to add just a tad of sugar and vanilla to the milk. Just a pinch of sugar and a drop of vanilla in a glass of milk or a teaspoon of each per gallon. If you have a hard time getting your brand of milk to dissolve, you can use warm or hot water to mix it and then refrigerate it afterwards. If you're going to use the milk for cooking or baking, you don't even have to mix it up first. Just add the appropriate amount of powder and water to the recipe separately and save yourself a step. But we can go way beyond milk. The first thing I'm going to make for my instant milk powder is cream cheese. We love cream cheese in this household. We eat a ton of it. It is definitely not something that I would ever want to be without. To make cream cheese, I'm going to be using two cups of the instant milk powder, three cups of water, 
about four tablespoons of white vinegar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now for the cream cheese, I am gonna use my butane emergency stove. This is what we turn to for indoor cooking anytime the power's out. And I've got a nice pot here, nice heavy bottom so that we it's not gonna burn on the bottom, the milk. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my two cups of milk powder into this pan. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my three cups of water and then I'm gonna get this whisked until it's all dissolved. So now that this is dissolved, I'm gonna go ahead and get it on the heat. I'm gonna be careful not to boil it. I'm just gonna bring it up to just, just before a boil, just about when it starts to just simmer a little bit. And anytime I'm dealing with milk and heat, I do like to stir it just to make sure that it doesn't burn on the bottom because it can have a tendency to do that. Okay, now this is just about to simmer. So I'm gonna turn that heat way down and I'm gonna start adding this vinegar about a tablespoon at a time and just keep stirring okay so this is starting to separate i can see the curds in here the one thing about these um these butane stoves is that i'm still adding the rest of the vinegar one thing about these butane stoves is that they are pretty powerful this isn't even a particularly powerful model and it's actually very difficult to get the burner low enough a lot of the time. Okay, here we go. Can you see this? This is definitely separating into the curds in a way. I've turned off the heat and I'm just gonna let this set. I'm gonna cover this and just let this set for a few more minutes just to make sure that it fully separates and then I'm gonna strain it. Okay, so it's only been just a few minutes, probably five minutes. You can see this is nicely separated. You can see the clear yellow whey and the white curds. Okay, so what I've got here is I've just got um, a strainer with some cheesecloth in it. This is um, about tripled over. And then I've just got a, a deep bowl here that this strainer fits right inside of. And this is what I'm gonna use to strain um, my cream cheese. I'm just gonna let this set here for about five minutes and drain and cool a little bit. Okay, so this has just been cooling for a few minutes, and so what I'm gonna end up doing is getting rid of this whey that you see underneath the here, but I'm not gonna throw it away. I am gonna go ahead and put it into a mason jar because it's something that you can save and use, and we always like to you know, have as little waste as we can with our food. So this can be used as an ingredient in baking. Anywhere that you would use buttermilk, you can use whey. Um, you can use it in protein shakes and things like that. Whey has a lot of protein. And this is part of the reason I wanted to let this cool a little bit because you don't want to pour boiling hot liquid into a cold mason jar because you could shatter your jar. So hopefully this has cooled enough. Okay, so now that I've drained the whey from underneath because it was pretty deep and it was going to be touching this, I am going to rinse this with just a little bit of cool water. That's going to rinse away any um, like residual vinegar taste and it's also going to help cool it off a little bit. Just rinse that with some cool water. That's gonna drain right through just like the way it did. And then I am gonna squeeze this out and get all the water out of this that I can. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I've got my little Ninja, uh, little mini food processor thing here. I love this little thing. I use this for so much. I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, cheese right into here, all these curds. And I'm gonna kind of break it up a little bit. And then this is where I'm gonna add the salt before I blend this up. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on this. And the way this one works is that the blending apparatus is separate. I've had this for years. I really love this set. I think it was a gift, but it came with a lot of these little bottom pieces so you could process up a lot of ingredients and then store them in your fridge in these little containers. I think it was a special set that came from BJ's maybe. It was a gift, but I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna put the blender part on the top and start blending. And the other thing is that if I do need a little more liquid in this, if this is too thick, then I can use a little bit of the whey that we have um, reserved. So this is looking pretty dry and crumbly, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of whey. It's getting better. Okay, so I have gotten this to the consistency that I want. I just kept adding some whey, a little bit, a little splash at a time, and blending this until it was as smooth as I wanted. And it was several minutes of blending. So 
what you definitely need to remember is if this were a grid down situation, a couple of options you would have is I have used our solar generators to run small appliances like this. So that works um, pretty well. And the other thing is you could get something like this manual food processor. I recently got this and this was exactly why I got this so that if I was in a situation without any access to power at all, I would be able to do little tasks like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put this cream cheese into this little jar so that I can let it chill. Now keep in mind the texture of your homemade products like this might be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing in store-bought products and that would be partially because you know if you look at your store-bought products you've got things like guar gum, uh, carob bean gum, xanthan gum, things like carrageenan which are in products like this and they're all about um, thickening and giving it texture and things like that but you know that you're not putting those additives into the things that you're making from scratch at home because some of those additives can be uh, harmful or dangerous or sometimes we just don't know we you know they might be harmful or dangerous so it's best just to keep certain things out of our bodies if we possibly can okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get a lid on this and put this right in to the refrigerator for a couple of hours now that our cream cheese has chilled in the fridge for a while we can enjoy it now you could always flavor this cream cheese if you wanted to you could add some herbs you could add some chives you could add some berries either fresh or freeze-dried crush them right up and stir them in a little powdered sugar with that if you wanted would be good as well but I just like to enjoy my cream cheese plain there we go mmm delicious the next thing I'm gonna make using my instant milk powder is going to be sweetened condensed milk you probably know that this is an ingredient often used in baking and desserts that typically comes in a can like this for me this isn't as much a preparedness thing as it is a convenience thing for my preparedness plan I would much rather stockpile a whole bunch of these cans and not have to worry about the extra step of making it up but I definitely see the value in knowing how to make a substitute for sweetened condensed milk in case you need some you realize you're out so you can complete your dish without having to run to the store. And if you're a person with limited space, this could come in really handy for you if you're already storing all the ingredients to make the sweetened condensed milk, then you can skip storing the extra cans and just make it up as you need it. For the sweetened condensed milk, I'm gonna be using one cup of the instant milk powder, two thirds of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and I'm gonna melt that. And then I've got some boiling water. I'm gonna start with a third of a cup of boiling water and I'm gonna add up to a half a cup if I need more to thin it out. In the interest of keeping this emergency situation friendly, I'm gonna to attempt to do this without electricity. So I've got a mason jar here and I've got this uh, handy little gadget that I got that kind of works like this. It doesn't need any power to blend things up and it's gonna fit perfectly into this jar. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we'll try it and see. In an emergency situation without refrigeration, you may not have butter. If you don't have canned butter, you could try butter powder instead of the fresh butter, or you could just leave out the butter and it would just be a little bit less rich. Okay, so I've got my melted butter here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my boiling water. This is a third of a cup. And now I am gonna use a canning funnel to get these other powdered ingredients in just so I don't make a giant mess. So I'm gonna add my cup of powdered milk, instant milk powder and my two thirds of a cup of sugar. And I'm beginning to think I needed to use a bigger jar. I did not expect this to be so bulky. But let's see if we can do it with this tool. I do think this needs to blend a tiny bit more. I can still see a little bit of chunks in there, but this tool is doing a great job. And I think that third of a cup of water was perfect. And this actually smells really, really good. I will say make sure that your water is very, very hot to make sure that it dissolves the sugar easily. I do think a powered blender would get this a little bit smoother, but this will definitely do in a pinch. The next thing I'm gonna be making with my instant milk powder is ricotta cheese. We absolutely love lasagna, we love baked ziti, stuffed shells, all the things that use ricotta. So this is definitely not something I would ever wanna live without. But unless you have a home freeze dryer, there's not really any way to get ricotta shelf stable in your prepper pantry that I know of. We do have a freeze dryer and it's definitely on my list of things that I wanna freeze dry soon, but we haven't tried it out yet. 
and not everyone has a home freeze dryer. So knowing how to make a ricotta cheese substitute from your pantry staples is a great skill to have. For the ricotta cheese, I'm gonna be using eight cups of water, which I've already got in my pot. I've got one and a half cups of the instant milk powder, and then I've got a third of a cup of lemon juice. And I am trying out the Santa Cruz organic um, pure lemon juice that I got from Azure Standard in my last haul not from concentrate. This is supposed to be really good. I got it um, for making lemonade concentrates because I think it would probably be much better than the typical green bottle lemon juice, but I'm going to try that in the ricotta as well. Uh, you can make ricotta with uh, either vinegar or lemon juice. I'm going to be using lemon juice today. And then I've also got a teaspoonful of salt. I am going to be using my emergency butane stove again. And I'm just going to get this started by blending in the instant milk powder before I turn on the burner. And that's one of the differences between instant milk and typical, you know, dry milk powder like you would get at the grocery store typically is that instant milk blends much more quickly and much more easily. So now that I've got this all mixed together, I am going to go ahead and turn on my burner. And just like the cream cheese, we're going to bring this up to just below boiling, just when you're starting to see the bubbles, but before it comes to a boil. But as long as you get it just shy of boiling, it will be fine. Okay, so this is just about where we want it. This is just about to start bubbling. So I'm going to lower the heat. And I'm going to go ahead and stir in this lemon juice. And then I am just going to turn the heat right off. And you can see this separating into the curds and whey. So at this point I've got the heat off. Now I'm just going to cover this up and let this set for about half an hour. Okay, so now that this has set for half an hour, it's time to strain out the whey. Now if you add some more fat to this milk, through either some oil or some butter. Um, you can actually get more, probably get more curds and less whey. All right, so we've got a lot of whey down there and so this is actually sitting in the whey. So I'm gonna have to drain some of that off. And just like with the cream cheese, I am gonna save this whey, not only because it's useful, but also because I can add a little bit back in if I need any to make the ricotta um, the texture that I want because we don't want it too dry. But for now I'm going to start by putting it into and I am not going to squeeze this out or anything like that because I tend to like my ricotta a little bit more moist so I honestly don't think that it needs to be squeezed. I'm going to go ahead and put it into this mason jar here because I can use that to run a little bit off like that. I can use that jar to store it in the refrigerator. I'm not squeezing, I'm just kind of letting it drip a tiny bit. In hindsight, scooping might have been easier here. Okay, so this is our ricotta. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the salt. And just mix that around. Now another thing you can do if you want to make it a little bit more like, like the store-bought ricotta that you get is you can take, um, I'm going to take my heavy cream powder because we're trying to keep this um, you know, emergency situation friendly and we wouldn't necessarily have uh, heavy cream in an emergency, but we always have heavy cream powder. I actually might pass it through a strainer just to make sure that it doesn't have lumps. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of this whey. and mix it up, maybe a tiny bit more liquid. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that right into our ricotta. And just mix that right up. And that's gonna make it a little bit creamier. And you could do that um, with as much of the heavy cream powder and whey as you wanted. If you wanted this even creamier, you could go ahead and do a little bit more. I'm just gonna rinse out the last bits of powder in there with a little bit more liquid. And that is going to make it a little bit more similar to the ricotta that you would get at the store. And that actually is a little bit salty even for me and I like things salty so I think where we didn't get a huge volume of the ricotta um, because we got a lot more whey because it was a low fat milk. 
I think I would start with about half the salt. Start with about half a teaspoon or even a quarter teaspoon and taste and add more if you would like because, you know, that's such a personal taste kind of thing and you can always add more but you really can't take it away once you've put it in there, so. So here is our beautiful ricotta cheese. Go ahead and throw a lid on that one and get that into the fridge as well. Next, I'm gonna use my instant milk powder to make yogurt. Everyone in our home loves yogurt and yogurt is such a nutritious food. It's all full of probiotics that are wonderful for your gut health. We love it as a snack, in parfaits, in smoothies. It can even be used as a baking ingredient. And if you don't sweeten it, plain yogurt is a great substitute for sour cream. To make the yogurt, I'm gonna start with eight cups of water. This is only four cups here, but I'll just refill this twice. And then we're gonna be using two and a half cups of the instant milk powder. And then right here, I've got some um, plain um, Chobani yogurt. And this is gonna be what I'm gonna use for our yogurt starter today. Now you might say, what's the point of making yogurt if you're buying yogurt to make the yogurt with? Well, you start with a little bit of yogurt and you make a big batch of yogurt and then you can take a little bit of yogurt from the batch you made and start your next batch. So you can continue on like that. You wanna make sure that you have um, yogurt with the live and active cultures and as fresh as possible and you wanna make sure that it's not a flavored one. Alternatively, you can use something like yogurt starter. This is just a little packet that contains a yogurt starter. And the, this one looks like it's good through, I think this would be the year, uh, 2025. So this is good for quite a long time. So you can definitely stock up on these and keep this in your prepper pantry. But today I'm using the Chobani. And then the last thing I'm gonna put in my yogurt, this is the sweetened condensed milk that we made earlier. You can do the yogurt without any sweetening and you'll just have plain yogurt, like what this is. And of course that can be a good um, sour cream substitute, or you can, you can flavor it and sweeten it with fruits and honey and whatever you'd like. But I am gonna make this yogurt sweetened to begin with. There's a pretty simple recipe where you use some sweetened condensed milk in a batch of yogurt, and that gives it some sweetness. Cause in, in this house, um, my kids are not gonna eat plain yogurt. And they're also probably not going to eat it if they have to take the time to doctor it up with a lot of things. So just starting it off sweet is going to make sure that it's something that we'll eat. Okay, so I've got my Instant Pot here ready to go. Um, it has seen better days. We are missing a handle over here. But anyhow, this is an Insta Instant Pot Ultra. It's a big one. I am going to put in my eight cups of water. And then next I'm going to mix in all my milk powder. I am gonna use a whisk for this because I'm gonna want the whisk um, to get the yogurt and the sweetened condensed milk mixed in. So I'll just start off with a whisk even though I don't really need this to blend the milk together. Next, I am gonna add the sweetened condensed milk. And this got really thick as it cooled. So in this, I'm definitely gonna try to blend in well so that it dissolves throughout the milk. Now typically when you're making yogurt from regular milk, you would heat the milk before you get started. You would heat the milk to 180 degrees. And the purpose of that is to kill any bad bacteria that might be in the milk that you wouldn't want um, in, you know, growing in your yogurt because you only want those good bacteria to be growing in the yogurt. But because we're using instant milk, we don't have to worry about it having any of that bacteria in it. And so I'm not gonna heat this. This is gonna be a cold start method. So not only is the sweetened condensed milk going to sweeten the yogurt, but because it has um, the extra milk solids from the really concentrated amount of milk powder we put in, and then remember we also put butter in, so it's also gonna have some extra fat, and so that will hopefully help this yogurt to be thicker and creamier. So I'm just getting that all blended in, all of that sweetened condensed milk mixed into this milk well. And next for my yogurt starter, I am gonna use just a quarter cup of this. And this we're also gonna blend well. Make sure it's all distributed throughout the milk mixture. Now incidentally, the rest of this yogurt that we're not using, you could take this and freeze it in your freezer in like maybe ice cube trays in one to two tablespoon amounts and it would stay good like that to use for starter uh, in the future. Now you don't actually need um, your Instant Pot lid on this, like the sealing lid. You can use the lid to your Instant Pot if you want, but you should probably take the ring, the um, rubber um, or silicone ring out of it. 
and just you or you can cover it up with just anything just to keep you know dust and anything else from getting inside of your pot okay so we got to get it over to yogurt and press now eight hours is the default it is a little bit after 11 p.m i'll be up by then but i'm just going to set it for a little bit longer i can always stop it early and so what this is going to do is this is going to incubate the yogurt so it's just going to warm it up to um, an ideal temperature for those cultures to grow and then it's going to hold it at that temperature so if you were doing this um in an off-grid situation in an emergency situation you can use some kind of a container that's going to hold in the heat so you can do it in a thermos a really big thermos we have a big thermos that would be great for this you can do it inside of like a cooler bag that you can wrap in uh, quilts or comforters anything that you can use to hold in the heat you could use a styrofoam cooler with some blankets and things like that any kind of insulated food container all of those things would work as long as you can maintain um, that warm temperature for those cultures to incubate so we will come back in the morning and see how our yogurt looks okay so it has been over eight hours we've been up for a while but let's see what we got in the instant pot wow we've got yogurt so i'm going to go ahead and turn this off and just let it cool off and then i'm going to put this into smaller jars to refrigerate if you want your yogurt to be thicker you can let it incubate longer and the other thing you can do is you can strain it you can use a yogurt strainer that you can purchase from someplace like amazon I will link to one down in the description box or you can just line um, you know use some cheesecloth in a strainer and put it in some kind of a container that you can cover and that can catch the liquid and then refrigerate it that way overnight if you strain a plain yogurt long enough you can actually make a cream cheese substitute I think what I might actually do with some of this yogurt is make some parfaits I've got these little cups that I got from Dollar Tree um, I think I got them last year but the, it was about this time of year the back to school section so they've just got the cup for the yogurt and then they've got um, a spoon built into the lid here and somehow this lid comes off so you can put some granola into the lid and my kids just love the yogurt parfaits that they have is it mcdonald's that has those yogurt parfaits and so i like to do those at home sometimes when i can so i'm just going to put some yogurt in the bottom and then i'm just going to add a little bit of freeze-dried berries to these because that's what my kids like in their parfaits berries so i've got a little bit of raspberries a little bit of strawberries a little bit of blackberries and i did not refresh these ahead of time because the moisture from the yogurt will do that and it'll also help to firm it up a little bit which is also going to happen from it going into the refrigerator got another good layer of yogurt in there gonna go ahead and do some berries again some raspberries some strawberry slices and then just a few blackberries just kind of spread that around and then i'm just going to top it off with a little more of our yogurt just enough to cover the berries because this is a pretty um the container doesn't look very large but now that i've filled it up that's actually a lot of food in there that is a lot of yogurt and berries. I'm gonna go ahead and add um, some granola into the lid. My daughter really likes this coconut and almond one. So there we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and snap the lid back together. And then the spoon snaps right back into the lid. And it screws right on like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, yogurt berry granola parfait right into the fridge okay guys that's about all i'm gonna get done this time but that is nowhere near all the things you can make from your instant milk powder so i think i see a part two video in our future i hope you found this video helpful i love knowing that i can take some shelf stable pantry staples and turn them into all sorts of different items that let's face it unless you have a home freeze dryer it's about impossible to include these in your food storage maybe this will also help you out if you have a lot of powdered milk um, in your food storage that you really need to start rotating through. Remember, you should never store anything that you don't use on a regular basis. So if you want to store something that you don't typically use, you should be looking into finding a use for it. Also, if you do have a large amount of powdered milk in your food storage and you've discovered it's one that you don't really care for the taste of drinking it plain, this would be a great way to use some of it up, practicing some of these skills. 
I definitely foresee some more videos showing some more different things that you can do with your instant milk powder. So let me know down in the comments, what have you made out of your instant milk powder and what would you like to see me make in a future video? If you need to add to your supply of instant milk powder and you want one that tastes really great, check out the link down in the description box for the one that we buy that's 60% off just through the last day of July. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss out on any other great deals like this, then definitely sign up for our tech service. I'll have the number down at the bottom of the screen. Just text sale to that number and we will send an alert right to your phone anytime that there's a coupon deal or a really great sale, flash sales, things like that. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a glass of milk emoji down in the comments and check out this video next to brush up on some prepper pantry basics. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.